Welcome back to another video in the top-down RPG template tutorial series. In the first video, we covered the project setup, where we created the levels and placed the necessary blueprints to get started on our RPG game. If you missed it, be sure to check it out for an overview of the template and how to get started with your own RPG game. In this video, we will be focusing on how to create player characters. Let's get started. I've already imported a character model into the project with some animations that I am going to use in this video. First, let's keep the folder structure the same as the template. We're going to use the Player Character Base Blueprint as a parent class when creating player characters. Be sure to take a look at the documentation for more information about these components and make sure that the skill component is replicated. Then assign a skeletal mesh for your character. Now we need to create the animation blueprint for our character. The minimum required logic is provided in the ABP Gameplay Animation Blueprint, so let's open that up and copy all the nodes into our Animation Blueprint. Then, right-click and create the missing variables. After that, copy all the nodes in the animation graph and paste them into our blueprint. Finally, don't forget to set the animation blueprint in the character blueprint. Next, we'll create our own data table for player characters. The structure for the data table is provided in the documentation. Add a new row and make sure that the row name and the ID are the same. To avoid typos, you can simply copy and paste the name. Use Act 1 with capital I for the starting act ID for now, as we'll modify this in another video. 
Refer to the documentation if you want to know more about these variables. Also, add combat skill tree here to avoid an error when testing this character. We'll cover skills in another video. Now let's create animations for our character. These animations will play when the character has no weapon equipped. If a weapon is equipped, animations will come from that weapon. When attacking, a random montage from this list will play. For our character, we'll create two right-hand attacking animation montages. Be sure to create the rest of the montages as well. Also, make sure to disable Auto Blend Out for the dying animation montage. In your Idle Run Blend Mode, use Speed for the name and 400 for the maximum axis value. You can also set all the animation montages except for dying to use the upper body slot. This will ensure that these animations play only on the upper body if the character is moving. Next, we'll set animations that will play when the character is wielding dual weapons. This time, the attacking montages won't play randomly. Instead, they'll play in order. Let's assign one right and one left hand attacking animation. then assign the rest of the animations. We'll also enable this character to use dual weapons. Assign the character blueprint here. We need to create two more blueprints to represent our character in the main menu and character selection level. Use the Main Menu Character Base Blueprint as a parent class to create the Main Menu Character. Set the mesh and create an animation blueprint for it. This time, we'll copy everything from ABP Main Menu.
Don't forget to assign the animation blueprint after you're done. Next, use the Character Selection Character Base Blueprint as a parent class to create a new blueprint. Assign the skeletal mesh and create an animation blueprint for it. Copy everything from ABP Character Selection. This time, there's no need to assign the animation blueprint on the mesh. Instead, we'll set it in the data table. Also, be sure to assign the blueprints we just created. Finally, Let's create animations that will play during the character selection process. We already have an idle, so we'll create a selection animation only. There is a testing level provided in the template. Let's test our character there. Notice that our character is not in the list when we press play. This is because we haven't told the game to use the data table we created for the player characters. To do this, open up the CDT player characters composite data table and replace the existing player characters data table with ours. Then, press play again, and you should be able to see your character. However, there are a couple of issues we need to fix. First, our character cannot deal damage, and second, if we spam the left mouse click, we can cancel animations. These issues can be resolved by setting animation notifies in our montages. Open all the montages and add a disable input notify state. This notify will ignore all inputs during its duration. Next, for the right-hand attack montages, add a right-hand action notify that will deal damage when triggered. In the damage calculation, only the right-hand weapon bonuses will be taken into account. Place the notify in a frame that makes sense. For the throwing montage, add a spawn projectile notify at the correct frame.
For the casting montage, we can use a both hands action notify to count all bonuses from both hands. Finally, for the dying animation, make sure the disable input notify spans the entire animation. For the left hand attacking montages, use a left hand action notify since we are attacking with the left hand weapon. Now press play again, and you should be able to deal damage. Let's test our character in the main menu. You should see your character in the character selection level playing an idle animation. When we select it, the selected animation should play. However, when we create this character, it doesn't go back to our main menu. This is because our character starts in Act 1, which loads a specific main menu. We will cover this in another video. Click on Single Player, and you should be able to see your character in the template gameplay map. Thank you for watching.